Tigers hit the road to face off against the Wildcats of Arizona. Gives the Tigers new life. Third and seven, Devontae Kincaid fires a shot to Verlin Hunter for a nice game. The Tigers are rolling because the next play, a strike to Chad Williams. He breaks loose to get the Tigers inside the 20. Arizona, players and coaches, they don't have an answer for this. Then, a quick pitch to Verlin Hunter, and the Tigers draw first blood in Tucson. If Arizona didn't like that, then they really didn't like this. After a long drive, fourth and two, stuffed. Tigers make a huge stop. Grambling takes over on down. Guy Stallworth putting it down with the hard-nosed defense. Let's say preparation for this kickoff tonight. There is the quarterback, Brandon Dawkins, keeping on first down. Like, like I said, it's really a linebacker or a safety spot, depending on where he lines up on the field. And the way the defense identifies him, sometimes it confuses them. Those hybrid guys make it tough. Here's Carter again on second down and 10, breaking one tackle, two tackles, and it takes two men to bring him down. Belknap, the 46-yard line for the Tigers. Devontae Kincaid, it'll play it safe. Martez Carter, though, is a big play machine, and he's got one here. He has a first down all the way across midfield on a third. Decide to bring pressure, and they'll throw a screen behind you. In this case, Arizona did not do that. They just decided to throw a screen pass and make a bet that Martez Carter can outrun all of their defenders, and he does just that. But Martez Carter gets a lot of blocks down the field from that Grambling. See the production he had last week against an NAIA appointment, and it doesn't look like the opponent makes a difference to him right now. Chad Williams made the catch, but he stepped out of Third down and three. Kincaid again, time, and he finds an open receiver for a first down. Dominic, another first down. Already nine first downs in this game for Grambling State. Carter with another fantastic move. They cannot bring him down. He picks up eight yards nearly. Team all swack player here in the preseason. We mentioned he went for over 100 yards against Cal last year, and uh, he's been fantastic so far. Yeah, we're seeing firsthand right now why he had 1,600 last week in his debut. Here comes pressure. Got him again. Kincaid lofts it to the end zone, and it is caught for a touchdown. Devon Lindsay, the red shirt freshman. You really can't just show up in these games, and right there. We get to see him catch a pass, although Kincaid has been winging it all over the field, and he does so once more to Verlin Hunter, who's been a favorite target of his, and he's very close to a first down. Yeah, I can run the ball so effectively. It's got to be something they're going to exploit, that size difference. Kincaid, pressure. Look at this guy. Oh, oh he's just... He's hurt. He stepped out of bounds, but and you hope it's just a cramp, which the way he pulled up makes you believe that it is. Trevon Cherry is the sophomore backup quarterback who was 11 of 15 in relief last week, albeit against an NAIA opponent. But as you said, Guy, they bring pressure on this play right here, and this is exactly why Marcel Yates is starting to back off a little bit. If they don't get him the first time, all this space spells danger for the Arizona defense. And again, you hope it's just a cramp. Devontae Kincaid, the junior we've mentioned from Dallas, Texas, started his career at Ole Miss. It was a pretty easy decision for him. The third-string quarterback, he did appear in a few games for Ole Miss and decided he wanted to get closer to home, be closer to his mother. SMU, Houston were interested. Uh, when the Grambling State coaches arrived at his home in suits, he committed immediately. And um, we just hope that the young man's okay. He's been fantastic tonight, and they're, they're so high on him. Uh, he had a foot injury, suffered during uh, pregame warm-ups for Ole Miss's bowl game last year. And you hope that that's not it's creeping back up on him here. Last week, and he comes into a big spot. It's a third down, and they're going to let him throw, and he completes the pass. What a throw. What a catch. Chad Williams, clothesline down, a first down across midfield. Yards down the field on the hook route. But they trust these receivers. They know these receivers will make plays for them. As long as 
Trayvon Cherry is able to deliver a good football. His guys will make plays for them, and that's a good ball with the number ones back in spring and got good reps with this offense. So hopefully he can tap into that experience a little bit, and these guys have good rapport with him. It looks like he might be the one that has to finish this game. Second and seven, and again he finds his running back, Martez Carter, weaving his way very close to what happened. Here comes pressure. Six men for Cherry. He finds the open receiver. Williams breaks the tackle. He's got a first down, and he's going to carry a defender with him down to the 12-yard line. Things I think we're seeing is this Grambling State offense has a number of different guys at wide receiver that can really play. And they just want to get these guys the football and allow them to do their thing. And along with Martez Carter, they're proven to be so much in, in space. And all his guys are athletes, too. And he's willing to bet, hey, they might not be as big, but we can compete with these guys in space. So if we allow our guys to spread out and get open, we got a chance. Here's Cherry. He's got a man open. He, I think, is down shy of the goal line. But that's going to be a first down, nearly getting in. And he's going to hurry his team to the line of scrimmage after Williams made the catch, understanding that Grambling State has no more timeouts. But to your point, the fact that it's relied less upon the, the big, strong guys, but they're going to try and use the big, strong guys here. Carter got air. Get their field goal unit on the field. they got to spike it. Cherry's looking to the sideline. He spikes the football. He did it outside of three. Going back to the earlier play. But they're going to play and try to determine whether the ball broke the plane. And I I think he I think he got in. I don't think he got down. He was laying on top of Tristan Cooper. What do you think, first look? Well, if his knee, and I think that's the question, if his knee did not hit the ground, and we'll get a better look right here. Maybe elbow? As the Arizona player goes to the ground, let's try to, if we can identify when Martez Cooper is actually down. Right there, he's down, but it looks like the tip of the ball might have broken the point across the plane. That's a touchdown. This would mean a 21-3 lead at the half. If they overturn the ruling on the field and rule this a touchdown for Broderick Fox. Now give Grambling State credit here because a lot of coaches, when inserting a backup quarterback in this position, up 14-3, might play it really safe. He, he elected to be aggressive and let his young quarterback push it down yep. the field. That's really impressive. If they, they end up with, with 21 points here going into the half, he's got to be very pleased with how his team handled that drive. I'm sure the replay repeatedly here uh, in the stadium and also uh, in the stadium and also some credit to the backup quarterback, Trevon Cherry, who wasn't sure what to do as he looked to the sideline without a timeout and then had the presence of mind to get up and spike the football. Remember, if he had waited another second and the clock had ticked under three, he would not have had enough time to spike the football. You must have at least three seconds to get credit for a spike. Yeah, and Broderick Fobb is going to learn a lot about his young guy, Trevin Cherry. You never know how these guys are going to respond until they, they get under the lights and the bullets are flying. And in that case, he had a good job looking to the sideline to get the instruction. After review... It was determined that the runner was on other players, and the ball broke the line, broke the goal line. Therefore, the result of the play is a touchdown. Wow. Please reset to six seconds. How about this? Well, and if you're Arizona, what you've done is we watch this Grambling State sideline. This is a dangerous team right now, and they believe they're going to go into this half, you know, barring something happening on the kickoff. They're going to go into this half up 21-3, and this is a team that believes. <laughs> and you better believe he's going to lead this team into the locker room, brimming with confidence for the second half. I understand something about that man. His team won 72-12. to As Jonathan Wallace adds the extra point, 72-12 to against an NAIA school last week, and he said he wasn't happy with the way they executed. And uh, I think that just about summarizes Rich Rodriguez's feelings right now. now I know this can get a little cliche. But this team seems to have taken on the personality of its head coach. I hate to say it, but we got a lot of time to talk to Broderick Fobbs this week. Just a really impressive guy. Sounds like he has this team extremely disciplined, being the same guys every day, very consistent. He said that's one thing he learned from Coach Robinson, the previous coach. Show up and be the same guy every day. He's trying to put that off on his team so they can be a consistent football team. It's not surprising to see how well they've played here tonight under the leadership of Coach Broderick Fobbs. Now they added 13 seconds <laughs> to the game clock. Why not Grammar? That's the slogan. Why 
Why not Grambling? Why not Grambling? Says Martez Carter. And it's a very well, this and, team, and it's a very fair question right now. Well, this and, team's got a lot of guys with a lot of a lot of chips on their shoulder. You know, I mean, this is this is a group of guys. A lot of them ended up going to Power Five schools at one point or big time Division One schools, and ended up coming and transferring here, or they weren't recruited as heavily as they wanted to. So they have something to prove tonight, and they're showing it. 